installing this LS Fabworks uh, cooler system. We're gonna take the hoses, we're gonna route them in. Bracket bolts up to the where the stock uh, headlight would have been. I think that's a photo. I got yeah, that's cool. Mike, you're not a fabricator. So I cut a portion out there. Let's fit the hose. Ooh. Guys, we're back at the Tor Custom Cycle Shop. We're installing this LS Fabworks uh, cooler system that they had just launched um, a while ago for rope lads out there. There's a few modifications that if you are interested in doing this product and installing this onto your bike, so a few things you're gonna have to do because it's not as easy as it kind of looks or as it kind of seems to be. Um, but Mike's gonna walk us through everything. This is the bracket, the bracket's from LS Fabworks, the cooler system's from LS Fabworks. Alongside, is gonna come with these big, huge hoses here. Um, what else is gonna come with? It's gonna be pretty much it, right? Uh, wiring harnesses for the lights. And the lights you gotta order separate? Like No, they come in the kit. So it'll come with these, it'll come with the harnesses. I cut them off because I'm making some changes. Okay. Still not a fabricator. <laughs> Mike. You're not a fabricator. But the harness has all the relays you need and it also ties the S1s into being blinkers. Okay. Now, if, if you are like us, you, you probably think, well, this thing, this thing is gonna come, we're gonna put it on here, it's gonna come with some type of bracket in order to hold it in place. Unfortunately, it doesn't. So Mike had to fabricate his own little thing here, which he'll explain in a minute, on how to keep everything on. Because basically what they tell you is that you're gonna basically take the cooler, Put it into the fairing and into place, and then the fairing is supposed to hold it in place. The pressure is, of the fairing. So yeah, it's a little crazy. Which you, you guys ran into a lot of problems doing that, right? We, we did. I didn't like the way it was fitting. I didn't like the way that this cooler was moving around inside. I didn't want to wear a hole in it. So over time. So basically, what we're going to show you now, we're going to show you a what he did, what they fabricated, what they cut out in order to make everything fit really good and um, show you how the cooler system looks on because it does look badass, it really does. It looks really, really cool. It's like very innovating one. It's different, um, it's, it's fucking cool. Get so, a, a new producer in town today. Huh? What I did was um, they wanted you to, the video that they show as their installation, they wanted you to cut a section out of the support here. Okay, once you cut that out, then the hoses would be bent and routed through the center of the support. Didn't really want to do it that way, so we came up with ideas for other ways. And what we wound up doing was uh, cutting two holes in the plastic of the inner fairing. Which they, they look really clean. Look at you, you're you're becoming the, the fabricator out here in Jersey right now, man. Still not a fabricator. <laughs> Mike, you're not a fabricator. So basically, we're gonna take the hoses, we're gonna route them in. Okay, I have a little piece of tape on here that shows me pretty much where the, where they stay for now. Okay. That's just... So you took like a little pre-measurement? Yeah, I took a pre-measurement. This one... I like the way you handle the holes, man. Thank you. Okay. So, and then these right here, you had to make these, I right? made these brackets. These are just raw metal right now. I'm probably going to make new brackets, but... Just for now, um, we're just kind of mocking it up today. Right. So this is basically what I was telling you guys. Like I, it, it should it should have kind of came with these little brackets in order to do something. But um. Okay. So them. this is the LNS Fabworks bracket. Bracket bolts up to the where the stock uh, headlight would have been. I wound up using shorter screws. Also, changed over to button head screws for the top, and I'll show you why once we put the cooler in. This thing does look cool though. I agree with that. These screws had to be shortened from the stock ones because what it does is the stock ones will then push on your plastic back here. So, so you want so to put shorter ones? I put shorter screws in there also. Okay. Now, you can mount the cooler this way. If you don't want to see the Moshimoto emblem, you can mount the cooler this way. Mm, I like the emblem. It's the same, yeah. 
these hoses just hook up. Okay. Okay. Now, bottom of the cooler is going to sit on top of these screws. Top of these right there? Mm hmm. So now we're sitting, we're sitting on top of the screws. Let me just get one side for now. Hold it. Okay. There's the problem. You have to like fight it. Yeah. So you just gotta fight a little bit. But... Okay. The nuts on the bottom. Sick. See, with your two free hands now, now you can touch me because we got the producer. <laughs> I just don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Now it's firmly mounted in there. And then these, these cutouts here, you had to do yeah. them to fit the holes on So Yeah, so I cut a portion out there to fit the hose, a portion out here. This is all the factory wiring that's gonna go back into the radio. So there is still a little bit of pushing that you have to do with the fairing, Yeah. but it will go back on. Oof. This way, yep, yeah, yeah, to the right. I mean, to your left. There we go. Now with the lights, you're also gonna be able to adjust them because they are gonna turn a bit. So depending on which way you want to face it out, face it forward, whatever, but you're able to adjust them in kind of any angle you want. Um, the space between the cooler and, and the fairing right here, it just kind of like sits right up on it. It's a like perfect fitment when it comes to that. And it's real clean. You don't see the hoses through here as well because that's one thing he was trying to figure out before was which is gonna be the cleanest way to kind of have those hoses you know, going in and going out um, of the bike. But this, this, this definitely was cool. Um, really quick, what, what, what are some, some good factors about even this? It's like, is it, because I'm not pretty sure people are gonna say, well, it's a gimmick. It doesn't well, really work. So what you're doing is you're, the, the oil's gonna travel further from the uh, initial cooler down there, mm -hmm. getting the oil away from the hot motor, getting the, f the fresh air into the front of it is gonna cool the oil down. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if he's got, uh, I don't know if he's proven how much it's going to work, like versus an ultra cool or something. But I mean, it's definitely the cool factor. Yeah. It, it really looks great. And uh, we're going to see as we, as the thing gets going, see what the temperature is going to be like. So over here, here's where the hoses are. So the hoses came out. So what you have to do then is. The hose here, we're gonna cut the rubber hose off the crossover tube, and we're gonna attach that one right there. So it's just gonna go through there, that's it. Mm -hmm. And okay. the other side though, the feed, let's go around the other side. So this side is gonna be fed from the original oil cooler right here. Gotcha. Okay. It's definitely cool, man. Definitely yeah. really cool. Um, <clears throat> we, we struggled a lot yesterday when the cooler wasn't mounted yeah. with trying to get it held in there and pushing the fairing on and fighting it. So what, what I did was I had it just zip tied in place this morning so that we get the fairing on and off easy. And then mm -hmm. while it was zip tied, I built the brackets. And I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Looks really cool, man. Um, there you have it guys. If, if you are in, interested in buying this up, now you know exactly what kind of little headache you're gonna be looking towards, but easy fix. Uh, this guy was able to fix everything right here, come up with some little parts. Now you know what to cut out, what to put. If you are in the local area, I highly suggest just to bring the bike over here, let Mike do all the work for you and um, save, save yourself the headache. What I'm also gonna do is these, these brackets were just kind of mock-up brackets. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make uh, some permanent brackets and then I'll take um, measurements and things like that. Mike, do you wanna tell him? 
You still not a fabricator, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you're not a fabricator. <laughs> Mike's been working on the handlebars for six days. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep it up. So you get fabricator tools up in this son of a bitch, you ain't a fabricator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's, he's a fabricator in my heart. <laughs> Damn, I was gonna say some dumb shit. All right, guys. Uh, like I said before, if you are in the local area, stop by the Tor Custom Cycle Shop. If you're looking for any cool installs like this, cool guy parts on your bike. You want to do a preview of the next cool guy tool? Ah, oh, let's show them. Let's show them. Yeah. We're actually going to we're going to be doing a separate video on, on Saturday here because we're going to be installing uh, some old suspensions on uh, on the Hawks bikes uh, front and rear oil and suspension. And then if you want to explain this to them, we'll, we'll, we'll break it down the other video a little bit more. So we we have uh, ordered a, <laughs> we've ordered a, a tool called the straight shooter, which is going to be a laser alignment tool for your motorcycle, which we're going to be able to line up the bike for handling and suspension. The first part of the tool has arrived. It's made by Rack and Pull Industries. This is called the equalizer. Okay. What this does is measures the distance between your lower and upper shock bolt. So you just kind of put it here and here. You're supposed to do it with the shocks disconnected. I'm just <clears throat> giving you a quick demonstration. Mm -hmm. So you see how we're lined up here? If I bring this down to the other side, it won't go on. Mm. So already from the factory, his bike, his swing arm and tire are shifted this way. So what we're going to do is install, rack, rack and pole makes this missing link. This replaces the top engine mount, makes it from a solid to an adjustable. So by adjusting that center nut, we're going to be able to shift the motor, which is going to shift the swing arm into position to line that stuff up so there's a lot more to come on this but uh that was just a little quick i'm, I'm gonna need that on my bike because my bike is like all over the place when you're in the twisties hey c come over here man what are we gonna say i forgot already. nah come on slip my head it slipped your head slip my head he was gonna make fun of me for something i was he was gonna tell me i'm not a fabricator part of that we but don't. it still makes us better than everybody else having shit like that in the shop. Hell yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, tune in for that video. That's going to be, we're going to go into depth with that one and show you guys a demonstration exactly of how he's going to be moving everything around. And that's it, guys. I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Like always, let the force be with you. Ride safe and enjoy the ride. And then say hi to Willie. So my, Mike's busting my chops down here. Remember when we were up there building the scaff bike? And, and I was going to... Uh, Grind a clamp down, you and you said, let a fabricator do it. Mike, you're not a fabricator.